What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. Before we get into the episode, if you guys are not subscribed, please consider doing so. It really does help us out. We put out great content on all things fashion design, sportswear design, graphic design, logistics and manufacturing on a week to week basis and we'd love to have you guys around for the ride. On today's episode, we'll be looking at anti-odor technology. What is it? How does it work? And obviously, if you're in the sports or space, this, for obvious reasons, is going to be something you've looked at or have heard about before. So we'll be going through the topic A to Z in a short and quick video for you guys. So buckle up. You guys are in for a good one. Hey, guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around. You're in for a good one. Getting right into it, anti-odor technology and textiles are a segment that are gaining popularity fast. You could pretty much find them in a wide variety of fashion spaces and especially in sportswear for obvious reasons. Well, the question here is, how does this quote unquote magical technology work? Is it even actually a viable product? And at the same time, can the characteristics of anti-odor clothing be potentially harmful to our health? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to be getting right into. Let's clarify some things and establish some baselines that are going to be necessary for helping us frame and contextualize understanding anti-odor technology. Sweat on its own has virtually no smell. And at the same time, it's not necessarily the thing that causes body odor. What causes body odor and these smells are when that sweat reacts with the bacteria that actually lives on the surface of our skin. What anti-odor technology will do is it will actually capture, block, or even kill the bacteria that lives on the surface of our skin. By doing this and by virtually eliminating the bacteria, it prevents this bacteria that is now gone from reacting with the sweat that undoubtedly happens when we exercise. And this is what actually causes the smell itself. So by eliminating the bacteria, there is no longer an opportunity for the sweat and the bacteria to come together to cause the smells, thereby eliminating odor. A common misconception is to assume that both sweat wicking and anti-odor fabrics are doing the same thing. We look and frame sweat wicking fabrics as these are the types of fabrics that are going to move sweat away from the surface of our skin. That's what releases or reduces odor. As I mentioned, it's not actually the sweat that causes the odor. With sweat wicking fabrics, we're a lot more concerned with moving sweat from the surface and allowing it to evaporate. This is to achieve homeostasis. This is to help regulate your body temperature. But with anti-odor fabrics, they're not so concerned with the sweat itself, more so they're concerned with the bacteria that sweat combines with. Now that we've learned all about anti-odor fabrics, how they work, and basically what the mechanisms that they function by are, how do we bring anti-odor technology into our collection? Well, there are a bunch of different options that we have out there, but we'll focus on the two main ones. Number one, we have the most common method that we see in the general mass market for treating clothing to give them antimicrobial properties or anti-odor properties. And this is to treat clothing with hydrogen peroxide. The way it works is we are exposing the bacteria to an environment of high oxygenation. Bacteria is notorious for not being able to live in areas with high oxygenation, thereby this creates an environment that's unsuitable for them. We kill the bacteria and we prevent odor. It's as simple as that. The second option we have is to use silver technology, and this is a lot less fancy than it sounds. Silver itself is naturally antimicrobial. It has these properties. So when it oxidizes, it releases silver ions. These ions themselves actually immediately kill the bacteria that causes odor. We see this incorporated into textiles either by knitting or weaving. So we've discussed the benefits of anti-odor fabrics. Well, what are some of the drawbacks? There aren't many, but there are a few, especially when it comes to the efficacy long-term. When we treat our fabrics with anti-odor technology, whether it's knitting, weaving, or treating them with chemicals, over a variety of washes or over the course of washes, we notice that the efficacy of the anti-odor properties eventually starts to wane. Studies actually show that over the course of 10 washes, the potency of the antimicrobial properties diminishes by half. 
pretty much by now you should know everything you need to know about anti-odor fabrics and hopefully make an educated decision on if this is right for you and how to incorporate it into your next collection. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider smashing a thumbs up. It really does help us out. It keeps us motivated and it lets more people see these videos, which is a win-win for everyone. If you guys want to see more, consider subscribing, like I said in the beginning of the video. And guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.